It is time for an update. I think it's the first video update that I'm making of uh, my progress on the power supply for the Data General Nova. The creation from scratch power supply from the Data General Nova. Now, uh, this information that I'm going to be referring to uh, throughout this video should be in varying stages at ntrex480.com. And if you just click on Entrex Components right there, uh, right at the top, you should find building a uh, power supply for DG Nova, DSS 116 from scratch. Click on that, and on all this information is going to be in there. And so let's have a look at what I've done here. Now, as I mentioned in my chassis video, uh, the chassis overview of the Data General Nova, the, <clears throat> the chassis that I received not only does not have a power supply, but it doesn't have the resistor board that connects the power supply to the backplane. And so I had to create one of those. And so we're going to have a look at that right here next. And that's basically something that looks like this, right? This is uh, the only picture I have of one. The only picture that right there. So that's what it's supposed to look like. I'm recreating this thing right there. And I have the schematic for that right here. I printed it out for my own ease of use. This is it right here. If you, you can also click on this on the page that I was just showing you for easy reference, or not so easy reference, depending on how I organize it, but I digress. Okay, so the power supply isn't done yet, but I've created the interface, and I've made this out of two boards. One is just a standard project board that you, know, you can buy on Amazon, just one of these. I would have chosen a slightly bigger one, but this is what I had a prevalence of. Uh, uh, yes, I had a lot of them. Sorry, it is very late at night. And then this. Now, this is kind of a lucky accident because I ordered um, at, on, on another page on ntrex480.com. You're going to find uh, another section in the same uh, ntrex components. You're going to find another another. Uh, post in there, page, post, whatever you want to call it, on a backplane mapper. That's not complete yet, uh, but I am working on that. I did order some interface boards for that backplane mapper uh, some months ago, and they were wrong. What was wrong with them is they were too thick. I should have ordered them at 1.2 millimeters because the original boards that I showed in another video, I didn't show the micrometer on those, but uh, they are about 1.3, 1.4 uh, millimeters. Uh, <clears throat> So, but I ordered them at the standard 1.6, and they do not fit in the Data General Nova backplane slots. They don't fit at all. Um, they're too thick. And so, but, you know, so I had about five boards that I've just been playing with and messing with, and there was a bunch of other problems with them, too. We won't go into that. But, as it turns out, while they're too thick for the, uh, for the, for the, the processor boards and all of the, all of the computer boards that go in the backplane, they are not too thick. They're the perfect thickness for what the resistor board would have been that plugs into the that plugs into the um, into the backplane. Again, showing that picture right here. They're the perfect thickness for this right here. And so I just cut one apart with tin snips. It seems to cut very nicely. I uh, used a Dremel to cut a slot in there so that it fits just nicely in the uh, in the uh, the female socket for the card edge. And again, you might want to reference uh, the video that I took on the uh, close-up for the chassis to be able to see that. I don't want to pull it over here now because, well, I'd have to clear everything out and it'd be in the way. Okay, so I figured out where all of the connectors were based on all of my mapping here. And I went through some extensive mapping that I put on my that I put on my site. Figured out the pinouts, um, pins one through 52, which do not follow the same naming convention or a numbering order convention as the slot pins on the back plane. So there's a couple of different naming conventions there. But I already had a rant video about that, so I don't need to say any more than that. But this is a picture in color. I printed it in black and white because that's just the printer that I have available. But it's a picture in color that shows all the pinouts, and I've just been using this as a guide to make certain that I'm matching up the correct card edge with the card edge 
that's uh, soldered to the other side of this board here. The card edge sockets uh, soldered to the other side of this board. And here we go. So these are all the pins. Uh, 1 to 5 is 5 volts, as is 27 to 31. So we got that right here. This is 1 to 5. And on the other side is 27 through 31. And so here I just have a wire that I've soldered onto those connectors on both sides, as it is right there. And then the next most logical thing is all of the ground connectors. The ground connectors are 32 to 47. So, so far, what we have here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 27 through 31. Sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 27 through 31, that's all 5 volts. And then, what was it? Uh, the odd, no, I guess the higher numbers. <laughs> Not even odd on this one, it's lower and higher. Uh, 32 to 47. 32 to 47 are the ground ones. And so, that's basically all of these. 32 to 47 are the ground ones, but only on that side. So, um, I have ground connectors going to this side, so it goes from 32 to 47 right there. Tested that out very carefully, and then the interesting pins come after that in all of the higher order. Um, but before we get to the interesting pins, let's get to the other interesting pins. Um, these right here. Let me widen out just a bit because I don't have a good enough field of view here. Um, these right here are the R-I-N-H, R-I-N-H, and I believe these are inhibit. I think I-N-H stands for inhibit. I just browsed that in one of the dozens of manuals that we can find on bitsavers.org, uh, uh, many of which I am linking right here in this page, particularly up here, linking those here because I'm using that is uh, guides and information, and some information is overlapping, and some information is slightly conflicting, and so I'm trying to figure out what to do all about all that. But this is fairly straightforward. Uh, this is actually a schematic that I scanned from the DSS-116 manual. You'll also find on my site. Um, interestingly enough, what number was it? I'm not sure. But anyway, printed this out all nice and neat. And so the major components are eight ohm resistors, at what I think is 3 watts. I found another source that called these 8 ohm at 3%, but this source calls them 8 ohm at 3 watts, so we're going to go with 3 watts, which makes more sense, I think. Pretty stout resistors. And 16 of them. And basically, one end of the resistor is connected to the plus 15 volts, the other end to all of the inhibit pins, all 16 of them and it says which connectors that they are supposed to go to, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, all the way through 21. And then there's another chart in here that shows, um, you know, w where that goes to on the connectors. Where's that chart? Yeah, right there. I think I've mapped all of that out. I extracted it from this right here. There's a larger version of this down here just in case you're interested. There it is right here. A larger version of this, if you click on that, it, you can actually read the whole thing and it show you, shows you where these pins go. Um, and so the connector that we're dealing with is this one right here. In the context of all of this, that's why I have it... Oh, that's why I have it circled up here. Right there, in red. Okay, good. So now we have frame of reference. And so let's have a look at this board. This is why I wanted to create this video, to get some good close-up shots of this before I wrapped it all up in tape, because I'm about to do that before I hook any power to it and try it out, because I don't want to accidentally short anything out on the chassis. So, what do we have here? We have all of these resistors, and then we have C1 through C7, which is supposed to be 50 microfarad uh, capacitors, because 50 is now an odd, uh, strange is an odd, obviously 50 is an even number, but since it's, since it's um, unusual and harder to get, I used 47 microfarads, and hopefully we're good enough. Now it doesn't say a voltage here, but since we're pumping in 15 volts, I thought I figured if we're above 15 volts, we're good. 
And then C8 to 17 is 6.8 microfarads. Those were much easier to find, so I ordered some of those online, and I found some non-polarized. So I used 47 uh, polarized, I believe they're electrolytic, and then uh, 6.8 microfarad, non-polarized, I believe they're also electrolytic. Not quite certain. Let's have a look, actually, uh, since I have these. This is what the, um, let's see here. This is what the, the capacitor that I used for the 6.8. Okay, enough information on that. And this should be the 47. Right there, get to better lighting, 50 volts, all is well. I guess it helps if I turn it the right way up. Okay, just wanted to make sure I documented well exactly what I used. What was the voltage on those, um, on those blue ones? 50, yeah. 50 volts. And so again, since I'm pumping in only 15, that's 1.5, I figure that, that should work out just fine. All right, good. So here's how I did this. I didn't have 8 ohm resistors, and the ones that I ordered will take months, not months to get here, but about a month because I ordered them from someplace in China. And I'm being a little bit impatient because I wanted to try something this weekend. And so we'll see. I'm almost there. Almost there. So what I did was I did have good old Radio Shack quarter watts. Now, what I've done is not gonna to equate to three watts, and I'm hoping that at least for my initial test with a single mem core memory board, I can get away with it. I'm hoping that. So what I did was I used some 10 ohm in parallel with some, um, some 10 ohm in parallel with some either 39 or 47 ohm, and the mathematical formula came out to be just under 8 ohms and usually 8.2, 8.3. So there they all are. We have uh, 12 of them here. Actually, there's 24 resistors because for every one, they're kind of stacked on top of each other. We have a 10 and uh, I believe it's going to be a 39. Uh, I believe that's probably a 47 right there, the ones where you see the purple. So I just did some experiments. After I soldered them together, I measured them just to make sure. And it turns out that they were all pretty much the same. Uh, so I just stuck with the 39s because I think they were just a little bit closer. Uh, 39 ohm plus uh, in parallel with 10 ohm comes to about 8.2, 8.3. And they all measure out to be about that. So there's 12 here plus four more is 16. And I have this beautiful solder job on the back where I have this right here, this centerpiece, which is the uh, 15 volts connected to the 15 volts. And I have this soldered wire right here yes it is speaker wire but it's what i had a lot of so i'm using it it should work it's low voltage after all right <laughs> okay anyway um and then that goes to the resistors and the capacitors and um the other end of the resistors go to these lines which go directly over to all of these six through 21 right there okay now capacitors so we have seven uh, 750 microfarad and 10 6.8 microfarad and basically all of them go from ground to 15 volts all of them and they're not in any particular order they're ordered nice and neat on this schematic as well schematics are neat but otherwise they're just the way they are as they are okay so that was pretty simple. So basically all of the blue ones, those are the 6.8s, and all of the black ones, those are the 47s that I showed you more of. And so here we have some jumpers that jumper over the 15 volts and that jumper over the ground so that I could have my beautiful rails, if, you can, if, if you, we dare call this ugly solder job, ugly yet I hope effective because I tested it very, I tested it a great deal. So 15 volts here. There's my ground wire, ground there, and I jump her 15 volts over to this one right here, and then I jump her ground over to this one right here on that edge. So there we go. That's, that's my hacked 
hacktastic solder job on the back of this showing all the connections and uh, we don't have any shorts everyone even though it looks all globular is all connected and so I'm pretty happy with it pretty happy with it I'm willing to give it a run on the rare data general Nova boards that I have as soon as I make sure I have everything else correct all right so there we go connected those over here and then finally let's get to the interesting ones the interesting ones all the way on the end here basically the um, the ones that I have in brackets here on my notes uh, 23 through 26 and 49 through 52 yeah these are the ones I really don't know a whole lot to do with uh, what to do with so I may not be doing anything with them initially now I've spent about <clears throat> way too much time trying to figure out the plus to minus 60 cycle AC because best I can figure out that goes to the the TTY or the IO board of some kind and I don't know what it does I'm going to figure it out but I'm not gonna let that process hold this up because basically I've at least run a wire to it so that I can connect it as soon as I figure out what it's supposed to be all right this is this is pretty in-depth here so there's all these other wires that I have connected individually using smaller speaker wire. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, from, I believe this is 49 to 52. And on the other side, 23 to 26 right there. Okay. Let's have a look at, let's have a look at uh, some of those. So let's say we have this cable here. And so here's the... I don't have us connected to anything yet, but I've labeled it well. So both of these go to 15 volts, plus 15 volts. I believe I have, uh, so we have two wires that I have going to 15 volts. So I can have a you know good amount of amperage there, I guess. Um, we have two going to ground and two more going to ground for a total of four that are going to all of the ground pins. And then I have two going to positive five volts. So hopefully that's enough uh, wire and I don't let it get too long. And I'll be using, um, well, I'll get to what I'm using in a minute. Let's go through these little ones here. So these are the ones I just don't know what to do with. Negative 15 volts. Well, I'm going to come up with negative 15 volts, but according to some of this documentation, it's only used for options, so it may not even be necessary. But then again, I might need it for the oscillating 60 cycle plus, plus to minus uh, 15 volts for a total of 30 peak to peak. That's a whole nother story. Then there's a signal plus five okay. And I guess to something I just read tonight that that's supposed to be two to three volts. I don't know. We see that near at the top of this page. I extracted that from one of the manuals on bit savers. I've hyperlinked that manual right there. It's the 1969 DG Nova, uh, DG Nova maintenance manual. I've hyperlinked right to that page. If you click it, you can see the whole manual will scroll through, but I just pulled that out. Power fail, mem okay, three to four volts. And then there's this uh, plus five volts okay, seven to eight volts DC. Is that a high signal? I, I don't know what that is. We'll figure it out here. I might figure it out with a little bit of trial and error once I get the rest of this connected. So there we go. There you have the, the, the plus five okay, the memory okay, and the power fail right there. Okay, there we go. Now, minus five unregulated. Well, that's gonna be pretty easy because I'll use the minus five on a modern ATX power supply. And I'm just not even going to touch this plus minus 60 cycles AC. I'm just not going to go to it yet. We'll see what happens, all right? Um, negative 15, I'll get to that in a second. That's going to be with some of these others. And then, this one's pretty straightforward. The V plus lamp and the lamp ground. Now, I find a couple of different, a couple of different voltages for this. I find a volts, I find one source that says the voltage for the lamp, and the lamps would be the, the lights on the front and they evidently have their own power supply, supposedly unregulated, and their own ground. And so I've wired that up, and those are, those are right here on pins 26 and 52 respectively. And so I have those wired up to 26 and 52 respectively. I have them both coming through on this side to that connector right there. And so 
What are we going to do with that? I don't know. But let's have a look at the confusion that I'm experiencing so far. Right now, um, VL, that's the lamp. L stands for lamp. I figured that out in context by looking at the rest of the manual. And it says 13 to 15 volts DC. All right, not so bad. Now, VINH, well, I know what that is. Uh-oh. All right, we can do without that. Sorry. VINH. Um... That one, see this says it's supposed to be plus 15 volts right here on the, on the schematic and lots of other documentation. This one says it's 17.5. I'm not going to mess with this. VMEM, I don't even know where that goes. So thankfully, it says 22 volts DC. Don't know where it goes. Don't have a wire for it. So I'm just going to pretend that doesn't exist right now. All right, so here's what's interesting. The, the, uh, the VL for v uh, voltage lamp. 13 to 15 volts DC, and then there's another one, uh, the technical manual for the Nova 800, volume 1, page 444-47, hyperlink that there, but I just have an excerpt here. This one uh, looks a little bit clear if you click on it on a, on a regular computer, I think, but um, I'm going to click on this and see if I can open it, see if that's going to be meaningful. Maybe not, huh? Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, that's a little bit easier to read. All right. So we've got plus 15 volts memory. Now, this is the only table that I found that tells me what the amperage is. So I, I tried to build my power supplies accordingly, and I think I'll get to that last. So plus 15 volts, 9 amps. Great. Uh, the V-lamp. In this one, it says plus 11, right? Plus 11. So evidently, I have some fluctuation here. So I've got a source that says 13 to 15. I've got a source that says 11. So what I've decided to do is, since I'm using partially a modern ATX power supply, I'm going to hook that to plus 12. And yeah, it'll be regulated, because that's a standard output on a modern ATX. So there you go. Plus 12. And then the dedicated ground, I'll just have to connect that to the common ground, because the plus 12 uses the common ground. So hopefully that won't break anything. And we only have two amps there, and modern ATX is more than capable of providing that. Plus 5 volts. Again, sorry, I keep trying to make that bigger, but it's not working on the iPad. Plus 5 volts, a whopping 12 amps. Well, thankfully, the modern ATX power supply that I'm using, and I will show this uh, right here just for the moment. Uh, thankfully, the modern ATX power supply I'm using for those voltages, I get a whopping 18 amps out of this one out of this 230 watt uh, one. So I think we should be pretty good there. And so uh, the positive 12 volts, seven amps, I think we're gonna be doing good with the two for the lamps. Uh, and I'm not using all of this stuff. I will evidently be using the negative five, which isn't listed on here. Uh, it's what its rating is, but it, as a modern ATX power supply, it has a negative five. Um, so, and it works, I tested it, okay. So let's see. And speaking of negative five, there we have it right there. One amp. Well, let's hope that what wasn't listed on that on that label there does give me uh, one amp of power. And then, oh, the negative 15 volts, two amps. But it says not used in basic machine, powered for options. So again, I'm not going to worry about it unless I need it for that oscillating 60 cycle signal. Again, not going to cover that in this video. I'm just going to keep talking about it. Okay. All right. So. That's the overview of what I have cobbled together so far. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, this is a fantastic piece of cardboard I've robbed from a box. And I think that this goes in the card edge, and this is behind it. Sorry, I'm not showing it in the chassis, but I'll do that later. And I think what I'll do is, I'll just tape it to this, and I'll use the electrical tape to wrap it around here and wrap it around here and secure this night nice and tight and that'll do two things it'll also insulate the back side so that uh, I don't short anything out with these beautiful connectors back here so I wanted to get good video footage of this and good pictures of this before I wrapped it all up so that I could see what I did you can see what I did I can go rewatch this to figure out what I did if something goes wrong or if I, I want to remember okay so almost done here now, what am I? I've showed you what I'm doing for the. Uh, showed you what I'm doing for the. Uh, 
for the uh, 11 or for the 11 or 12 volts for the console lamps for the 15 volts uh, for the no I haven't shown you what I'm doing for the 15 volts I've showed you what I'm doing for the plus 5 volts and negative 5 volts so what do we have left to cover the plus 15 and the negative 15 what am I going to do with those well according to this it says that I need 9 amps 9 amps on the plus 15 well that's pretty hefty so what am I going to do well I bought a power supply another power supply on eBay um, it didn't work I have a whole other video on me uh, putting that together We'll leave that to be the way it is. I can't even remember what the brand was right now because it's so late. But here it is. What am I going to do for the 15 volts plus and minus? Well, we're looking at them right here. Set this aside. That's right. That's right. Laptop power supplies. You got it. I'm going to use... <clears throat> it, it just so happens that... Uh, I used to use the Toshiba Tekras back in the early 2000s all the way up until 2011 or 12 when I upgraded to another Toshiba which is now outdated but anyway the Toshiba Tekra I've got a, a glut of power supplies for these and it just so happens that look at this this original Toshiba Tekra power supply is 15 volts 5 amps well it says I need 9 okay well, I probably could get away with 5 but since I have a lot of them well, let's put some in parallel. Here's a generic one that I use for another one of those laptops. It's 15 volts, 4 amps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug both of these puppies in. I've already modified the cable without ruining the end because I may want to use it again someday in those laptops because they're still good laptops. I did a cut and splice and I just did some leads off of this and I've connected these two in parallel. Just twisted them together in test so far but that's what I'm doing. So you're looking at it right here, folks. This is the plus 15 volts. What about the negative 15 volts? Well, okay. So I couldn't find a third one of these. Otherwise, I just use a third and then, you know, hook it up inverse where um, I'd have the, the positive connected to the ground and then the negative becomes the negative 15 volts. And since it's an isolated power supply, it's isolated ground tested this it actually works now gonna do something a little bit funky I didn't have the uh, another Toshiba but I did have a Dell and the Dell this one is a more normal power supply with more normal voltage as you can see it's 19.5 volts lower amperage 3.34 but something that I did uh, as I was scrounging around trying to find some of these things as I broke down I did something I really should not do very much of but I went to Fry's uh, in my local area and I acquired some voltage regulator for 15 volts, way overpaid for them, but one of the ones I overpaid for I'm actually gonna use, it's this one right here. It's the NTE 968 right here, and there's the wiring we have for that. It seemed very, very, very basic, and uh, in my test it worked extremely well, so this one I really don't care about because they don't have the laptop for, so I just flat cut the end off of. And I wired it right up to the uh, right up right up to this regulator. I have yet to um, I have yet to uh, heat sink this, and I have something created to do that with, possibly even with a fan. Although I don't think it's ever going to get warm enough to need a fan. Just a good heat sink should be good enough. And it really does drop that 19 volts right down to 15. And if I hook it up backwards, I can get my negative 15 volts where I hook the positive up to the the, the common ground of all the rest of it. And, and then the negative on this uh, ends up being my negative 15 volts. And I measured across the positive 15 connected that way to the negative 15 on this one. And sure enough, the spread between them really is 30 volts. It did actually work. Sorry, I'm not showing that to you now, but the video has become long enough. But I just wanted to show what all the components were. I'm sure in the next video, I'll check those voltages uh, before flip, flipping this thing on just to make sure I have all of that stuff all of that stuff good fine and right okay so there you go there's the craziness of this thing and I'm gonna call it a night and tomorrow I'm gonna tape this thing together and I'm gonna start connecting these wires to the various power supplies laptop ATX and what have you and hopefully We'll be able to power something up and i don't even know what we're going to do yet because you know i don't have a terminal or anything i don't know how to configure the terminal to the tt wire board but we'll get there one thing at a time we need power so this is it this is how we get power 
from scratch, or at least how I'm getting power from scratch. This is at the first major step on the Data General Nova. All right. Hope you found this at least somewhat entertaining and informative. I know I will when I go back and try to figure out what the heck that I did. So, thanks again for watching. Take care.